everyone welcome to another video today's video is going to be about tables in tableau and how to take advantage of some tricks tips and tricks in tableau to build tables that go a bit beyond what we're used to so actually the inspiration uh, comes from this post by ludovic tavernier on tableau public where he shows exactly that he shows how uh, default tableau tables are very simple and there's nothing wrong with that, but that we can go beyond that and really take advantage of shapes, of fonts, of colors, uh, of all of these attributes that can really draw the user's attention to the important details in the table. So I hope this uh, video will help you also take home some tips and tricks to improve your own Tableau table. Let's get started. So I have identified five steps in building a better Tableau table. So what we want to do is really to create a structure with inline calculations. You will understand what that means in a second. We're going to choose the level of details we want to show, and then we're going to play around with the marks card. So in instead of dragging everything directly into rows and columns, the marks cards are really going to be the key. And at the end, we're going to just, uh, you know, clean up the formatting, the alignment, and make the table look the way we want it to look. So let's start out by creating a structure with inline calculations on columns. All right, so what does that mean? We are going to create some inline calculations, which means, as you saw there, average of zero. That is an inline calculation. So we are calculating, we are creating a calculated field directly in the line. So actually here we're going to use different examples of these uh, very simple inline calculations. I'm using average of zero, minimum zero, average of one and average of minus one. And this is all to, uh, to show you how, depending on what we choose, we are going to create different alignments. So if we choose average of one, Tableau will create an axis that goes from 0.0, .0 to 1.0 and our dot will be all the way to the right. On the other hand, if we use average of um, minus one, we have the opposite effect. So that's where we can play around. We can have two elements that are really far from each other, or we can have them really close to each other. And this is how we can build the, the structure that works best for our table. So our next step is to add the level of detail that we want to show to the rows shelf. Um, why do we want to do that? Well, we want to display some rows and we can choose how many rows to display by adding the level of details to rows. So in my case, in the case of the table that I'm building, I want to show one row for each match and each match corresponds to a match ID. So that's the level of detail I want to put on my rows shelf. So for our third step, we are going to add some fields to the marks cards. Now, these are the fields that would, we would normally add directly to columns to create a table. In this case, we're gonna add them to the multiple marks cards that we see. So usually we have just one, uh, but since we have added these four inline calculations on columns, Tableau has created one card for each of them and one card that, um, that controls all of them at once. So we're going to start with the first. And yes, you see that if I click on the first calculation, the first inline calculation, Tableau shows me the connected marks uh, card. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out by uh, dragging uh, fields onto the onto it. So I'm going to start out by dragging it, um, Tegenstander, which is opponent, to uh, text. Then I'm going to drag place onto text. And then I'm just going to start playing around with fonts, with how I want to display it. Of course, is uh, my choice. Uh, I was inspired, as I said, by the dashboard that Ludovic created. So I followed it more or less. Um, and I tried to make it, you know, uh, <laughs> nice looking. So that's the first step uh, is to format the text. The second thing I want to do is actually to hide those dots. 
the default um, mark, <laughs> let's say, is a circle. I'm gonna leave it on, but I'm gonna just make it disappear. So the size is gonna go down to zero and the opacity as well. So we won't see that anymore. As you see here, I changed the alignment uh, to central or to right. You can play around with this, of course. And I left it on the left at the end. And the rest will be formatting the other cards. As you see, if I don't know which card corresponds to what, I can just click again on columns on the inline calculation. And then again, I will start dragging and dropping the fields. I'm going to show you a bit more of how I did it so you get an idea. But again, I dragged dates onto text. Um, I also dragged time. And then I did more or less the same formatting as for the first column. Again, hiding the dot by bringing the size and the opacity down to zero. This means, of course, that if your end user uh, hovers over it, um, it will still pop out, so it will not be completely invisible, but uh, at first sight, it won't be there. And now you see me uh, play around a bit with the other two columns, with their alignment, until I'm happy with what I have. So I'm starting with the last one and changing it into a square from a circle, because I want to have this ID number in a square. So I'm just dragging the ID number on text, uh, making it centered, changing color according to which palette, which colors I want to use. And then I'm using the other field. As you see, I'm actually adding an inline calculation with text directly into the card. That is also possible uh, because I didn't have any field called match number. So I am creating it. And again, size down to zero, opacity down to zero. All right, I'd like to add an extra tip here, and that is to use measure values to create some oval labels. So here's how we do it. So we go to the data plane and we drag measure values onto columns, just like that. And this will allow us to have multiple values onto one. In this case, we have average of zero and average of minus five. And this basically adds two dots onto the same axis. So you see we have two dots, two blue dots over there one and two so the next thing to do is to go to the marks card and change from circle to line so the line at first will be vertical and all we need to do is to drag measure names onto path and this way we get this vertic this sorry this horizontal line that we can turn into a label looking feature if we prop the size all the way up to the maximum so here are some ideas of what to do with that label. Um, I created a couple of calculations. Well, of course, it depends on your data set. In my case, I created a date diff, so a difference in date between the current date and the date of the match. Another idea is to use this date difference to build a string that says this match took place this many days ago or this match is today if the date is equal to today or this match will take place in this many days in the future. So these are a couple of things I used in my table and of course it depends on the type of data you have ahead but uh, you can use this also if you have a shipment date so you can say already shipped to be shipped um, and there's a lot of other cases where you can do something similar. So a fourth and also important part of your process will be that of deciding the final alignment of your column. So here again, you can play around a bit with, do I want average of one or average of minus one? And it's a bit of a trial and error situation where, well, you can find what fits best to your user case and uh, yeah, keep playing around with it until you're satisfied. All right, now for the last part, it's time to clean up the formatting. So what you want to do is definitely to get rid of the ID header. Um, you want to get rid of the axis. So I just got rid of the axis. You want to get rid of the ID layer because that's not doing much for you. It's just there to maintain the level of detail you desire. 
and for the rest really it's all about getting rid of all those vertical lines and those horizontal lines that make you look like uh, some sort of cage or <laughs> of uh, net or net or uh, grid however you want to see it uh, we want a nice and clean table where the only thing to pop out uh, are data points so yes, uh, here you see an example of how I do it. Uh, I go step by step. There's not really a way to get rid of all of these lines uh, at once in Tableau. I hope in the future they will add a feature like that, but unfortunately uh, not yet. So yes, this is uh, the last step. And of course, in my case, I also want the colors to match. I chose this mm, sort of Lyriac, maybe a pink color. And there it is, there is the final table. Now we have it still in a sheet and we want to add a title and then insert it maybe into a dashboard, if that's what we want to do. And that's it, now we have created a new table and different type of table that maybe will be more appealing to our end user. And it can also be a nice way to help users transition from the Excel mentality, the spreadsheet mentality, and start seeing the value of Tableau, what Tableau can add. Uh, so maybe if you, have a, if you have users that are particularly stubborn in wanting only tables, this can be a first step for them to move a bit forward and yeah, start using the nice features that Tableau has to offer. Thank you for watching this video and see you next month.